You're watching the Tech History Channel, revisiting the moments that shaped our present. If you haven't watched part 1, be sure to watch it first. And if you go on to enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Any support is greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's begin. The founders of Terrorvision were infuriated and decided to sue Google. Because they were convinced that Google Earth was algorithmically the same as Terravision and they had the patent for that algorithm. There was no algorithm that could do what Terravision and Google Earth did except the one they had patented, the founders of Terravision said. I will now try to explain the algorithm as simply as I can to help you understand why Terravision were convinced that Google Earth was using their algorithm. As the user flies closer to Earth, each map will subdivide into four different maps, so the system doesn't have to handle all the data at once, but only handle a fraction. This allows the system to have the right resolution and be fast enough to render the texture properly as the user zooms in. And, instead of having a fixed coordinate when the user opens up the program, they would now use a floating coordinate system, basically meaning that the position of the coordinates will be determined by the cursor of the user who is controlling it and as well as the parts they are zooming into on the map. This prevents the system from crashing when a user zooms into the coordinates they want to go to. Thus, the algorithm allowed the program to handle infinitely large amounts of data without overloading or crashing the system because it breaks apart the data into multiple sections of four. Any other algorithm you would imagine would inevitably not work due to the sheer size of the data being dealt with. So they went to various meetings to find lawyers that would represent them in the lawsuit. But keep in mind that this was the early stages of the computer and internet revolution. The internet is still a very new idea at this point. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At There's Allison, can you explain what internet is? Many patent lawyers at the time simply didn't understand the concept of a computer and the internet, let alone the algorithms that fueled the digital world. When they eventually found a tech-savvy lawyer, he pointed out a devastating detail, saying that because the pair had sent over a proposed offer to Google for about $4 million, no one would ever take their case because a patent lawsuit in America alone costs a minimum of 5 to $10 million, making it a net loss endeavor even if they won the case. Seeing this, one of the original founders of Terravision, Joachim, decides to give up and leaves Terravision to take a job as an art professor. Shortly thereafter, without any extra funding because investors were scared away by the Google Earth competition, Art and Com went out of business. But that's not the end of the story. In 2014, Joachim managed to convince a law firm to take the case because there was one simple phrase that could change the entire fate of the case in collaboration with. Terravision wasn't valuing their invention in the email. Instead, they were talking about a collaboration. And because the collaboration was never entered into, the email could not be used as fair valuation for Terravision, meaning that the founders of Terravision could sue for an amount they thought was fair based on how much Google Earth had made off of their idea. Now that the founders of Terravision had a case, they needed to come up with an amount that they deemed was fair compensation for Google to pay for using their invention. But wait a minute, isn't Google Earth free? I mean, I have it on my phone and I can use it without paying a dime. Well, Google Earth works like all other Google products. The product is free for all users, but advertisers pay to advertise on them, which is how Google makes money. But Google Earth doesn't have ads, so does that mean it doesn't make money? Not exactly. The genius part of Google Earth is usage time. Google, above all other goals, wants you to stay as long as possible on its various suite of apps. And given that the average time spent on Google Earth per user per session is 20 minutes, that is an eternity on the internet. Just as the advertiser whose ads you skip a mere 5 seconds after it starts at the exact moment when it becomes skippable. The lucrative part of Google Earth is the data Google can get on those users. They are able to see whether you're looking for restaurants nearby or clubs and so forth. If an advertiser like your local restaurant wants to advertise on Google, they are willing to pay more for an ad if they know first that you are interested in local restaurants and secondly if you are currently in that area and Google Earth accomplishes both with its data. 
During the lawsuit, they estimated that Google Earth had been used over 7 billion times, and in the email that the founders of Terravision had sent Google, the agreement of the partnership was that Google would pay 10 cents per use of Terravision. Multiply 7 billion by 10 cents, and you reach a staggering $700 million, which is what the pair was suing for, not the $4 million Google would have them believe they should have sued for. Google tried to argue that there were other algorithms that could perform the same task, but none of them seemed to make sense. So, after arguing that Google had profited from Google Earth and that there was a high likelihood that they were using identical code like that found on Terravision, it seemed as if Terravision was going to win. Apparently, the Terravision team alleged that weird things happened during the trial, saying that some important blog entries disappeared in the middle of the court case and at some point, People said they couldn't find any information about Terravision, to which someone responded, what search engine are you using to look for the information? But the most significant part of the defense brought forth by Google was a project done by the Stanford Research Institute called Multidimensional Application and Gigabit Internet Consortium or Project MAGIC for short which had a sub-project also called TerraVision. The MAGIC project was launched for the US military in 1991, in which the military could zoom into 3D representations of the Californian military base up to a meter. Although only an area of 40 by 30 kilometers had been photographed and mapped, it was extremely accurate. In addition to this, a programmer said he had demonstrated SRI television at a conference called SIGGRAPH in 1995 and on another occasion publicly. This would mean that, by the time television was invented, something similar was already created meaning that the algorithm they claimed ownership over was in the public domain and anything in the public domain cannot be patented. Artencom tried to argue that the algorithms were not similar and that the television that SRI had created was limited compared to their program. The outcome of the judgment boiled down to these three questions. First, do you find that Artencom has proven that Google Earth infringes on the patent? That, unfortunately, is answered as no. Secondly, do you find that Google Earth has proven clearly and convincingly that the patent is invalid? This is answered as yes. The third and final question. Do you find that Google Earth uses a fundamentally different method than TerraVision? That is also answered as yes. Hence, Google won the case. The funny thing is, had Pavel and Joachim successfully built Terravision the way they envisioned it, with 3D models and have people's phone numbers popping up every time you clicked on a building, it would likely not have existed in Germany. That is because Germany has some of the strictest privacy laws in the world, which are the reason why to date, Germany still doesn't have Google Street View. Another fact is, did you ever wonder why a German company was suing in the US? That is because the European patent was never granted because examiners had doubts about the novelty value and the company eventually got out of the process by failing to pay its fees. Unfortunately, their work and subsequently their lawsuit is in vain and despite being reserved to the shadows of tech history, they are both thankful that their ideas are at least out there for the world to be revolutionized even if their names aren't in the limelight. In a weird way, Netflix and these type of videos are the way that they finally got their credit. Pavel Meyer, the main programmer behind Terrorvision, actually ended up becoming a politician and joined Germany's Pirate Party. The party was voted into the Berlin House of Representatives, making Pavel a member of the parliament, but he left the party in 2015.
He now runs a company called Hooker, which was originally spun out of Art and Com, and also hosts a podcast called Corona Weekly. The art professor, Joachim Sorter, unfortunately passed away in June of this year and never got to see the finished docu-series, but he was heavily involved in its production.